Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I have an absolutely awesome little surprise in here. A relic from World War II, actually. Oh, there it is. It's a triple wrap. <laughs> All right, yet another package to open. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that beautiful box. You might notice striker material on both sides. That is because these are old self-soldering joints so <laughs> imagine you're in a war zone and you need to make soldered connections you don't have access to 120 volt or 220 volt electricity depending on you know where you grow up and I mean back in World War II I highly doubt they even had like butane soldering irons that sort of thing so what they used was a pretty fail proof method they have these beautiful little copper tubes packed with uh, rosin and solder bits then it's wrapped in a, a pyrotechnic composition to heat it and you have like basically a little strike anywhere match head right here so you need to make some sort of uh you know say, say you're doing demolition work you need to cl connect a couple wires or I don't know if they use this for any communications connections I don't believe they did uh, from the research I could do, which I could find very little about these, they were mostly used for demolition and sabotage work, uh, mostly by the OSS and Special Operations Executive. Uh, so the OSS was the precursor to the CIA, which we all know a group of really good guys who, uh, you know, they pick great leaders across the world. And uh, the SOE, I guess, is the British or, or UK equivalent, I'm not exactly sure. But I've been wanting to get my hands on these for a long time. Super, super cool. So, really designed beautifully for field operation. They're coated in some sort of wax to waterproof the pyrotechnic composition. That way, you know, if these get dunked or, or rained on, it, it'll hopefully still work. They got a little flare on each end of the copper tubing for a ease of insertion that's always a good thing and I'd love to know what type of rosin and solder uh, probably just a 6040 lead with some sort of uh, rosin flux in there or something of that nature but what a cool little package so these things are quickly approaching a hundred years old they're probably made in the 30s I'd imagine maybe in the 40s but uh you know, at least at least 80 years old. So, kind of makes you wonder if these things still work. That's what we're here to test, though. <laughs> you guys know what this channel's about. Oh, and here's... I guess I totally missed this. The original instructions for use. Oh, I guess they're not as old as I thought. These, uh... I guess these were made post-war, 1964. Oh, that's a bummer. I thought these were original World War II. And they tell you to remove the burnt composition, which does make sense. There could be, uh, there could be compounds left in there that I don't know what composition they're using. I was really trying to find it out. Obviously, on the striker, I imagine it's probably the actual portion right here. I imagine it's probably a potassium chlorate based composition just you know it's probably the same stuff they use in strike anywhere match heads the actual larger portion of the park technic composition I do not know uh, I'd love to know what the heck it is there so if any of you guys are aware whether it's a nitrate or perchlorate or chlorate based composition uh, I would love to know so uh but I just, I couldn't find much info on these things at all. All right, so I want to give one of these a try. 
So let's actually follow the instructions here. So part one, remove insulation at least quarter inch, more than half length of sleeve. Guess they really want it to butt up in there. Got the old dirty stripper. Oh, it's so dull. Jesus. All right, I'd say that's more than half. Well, that seems excessive. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> Cut another piece as well. That way we'll see how the joint is. That piece went a little better. Right into the flared fitting. All right, scrape each separate wire clean with knife. I should have done that before I put it in. Got my little fire abatement system right there. <laughs> Very high class. Hold sleeve and draw side of striker across red patch. Oh, I'm gonna move these away just in case shit goes south. I don't want the whole pack igniting. <laughs> Alright, so hold the sleeve. This had to be a little frustrating to work with on a battlefield. <laughs> Bullets whizzing over your head and you're trying to make solder joints as you demolish some sort of a enemy fortress or whatnot. Oh, how cool is that? Totally flameless. <laughs> how cool. Wow. Right over here you can see... God damn, it smells a bit like a head shop. <laughs> Not that I know what that is. Um, holy smokes, see... Some solder actually came out here. You can see the little speck. Plenty of uh, flux. That's really awesome. Made a beautiful connection. That is just thoroughly impressive. Plenty of solder for a good joint. God, I would love to know what composition they're using for this because that was a, a pretty impressively flameless burn there. And it smells pretty unique. I can't identify that smell. I have no idea what this would have been. Whew, a little stinky. I need a damn fume hood. So at this point it says... Oh. When solder softens, press conductors into sleeve, continuing to wriggle or press until conductors overlap the full half inch. Well, I fucked that up. It's 14 gauge anyway, so it wouldn't have been able to overlap in there, but they're just ensuring a really good mechanical bond in doing that. This, this formed plenty of, plenty of uh, good bond here. No issues whatsoever. But again, if you're, you know, looking for military spec bonds, they, I'm sure, have to be overlapping. Hold steady and maintain pressure until cool. Remove burnt, con burnt composition with pliers. So. Not quite pliers, but close enough. That is awesome. What a freaking genius way to make field solder connections. Why don't they still make these today? It's goddamn ingenious. I mean, I know portable solder not, soldering irons are great and whatnot, but having a few of these as backups in your pocket, you know, if you're working up in a, uh, like a cell tower, that sort of thing, where... <laughs> 
God, that would be an awesome tool to have. 60 to 80 year old, uh, what would that be? Yeah, 60 year old solder joint. Still worked beautifully. What an awesome little tool. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video of a uh, really, really cool little device. Super simple, but elegant and beautifully functional in its design from a day and age when the entire world was at war. <laughs> and technological innovation, of course, because everyone's at war, was at its peak. But pretty damn cool stuff. So I'm sure the way 2020 is going, we'll probably have World War III break out and we'll get more cool shit like this. So if you like the channel enough, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Finding uh, old World War II relics like this is not easy or cheap. So thank you so much to my patrons for making this one possible. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.